Good evening and welcome to our Ash Wednesday service. I'm grateful for all of you that are here as we're filling out our space. <laughs> Um, I also want to let you know we have uh, a Lenten devotional that is available out there. How many copies do we have? Maybe a few, but we can get more uh, as well, that if you'd like to uh, do this as part of your Lenten journey, that these are available for free out in the narthex. I always like to start the Ash Wednesday service by uh, going back to our Church of England roots and reading from the Book of Common Prayer. Uh, these words that are an invitation to Lent, to the season of Lent uh, at the start of Ash Wednesday. Um, I like it because it uses the word notorious in it uh, in a unique way. So, um, but let me read these, these traditional words as we begin tonight's service. Dear people of God, the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection. And it became the custom of the church to prepare for them by a season of penitence and fasting. This season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who, because of notorious sins, had been separated from the body of the faithful were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby, the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our Savior, and of the need which all Christians continually have to renew their repentance and their faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, to the observance of a holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. Now, fortunately, we do not separate people for notorious sins uh, anymore in our tradition. Uh, they did in the early Methodist movement. You could be put into a penitent band, and then you had to kind of work back into the community. Um, but, but I read those, those traditional words, and then on the other side to say that even Ash Wednesday— um, even as we start this season of Lent that is about repentance and reflection, that it is not a season of, of looking at how bad we are or what sinners we are. It is more importantly a season of new life and new hope. And Ash Wednesday is simply the start of that new hope and going in a new direction to make a fresh start. And today, uh, our call to worship that Emily is going to read in just a moment, it comes from the traditional Ash Wednesday reading from the prophet Joel, which you'll hear a little later, that has, again, all of this language about repentance and coming back and the day of the Lord. But I always also like to remind us that the day of the Lord in the Hebrew Scriptures is synonymous with salvation. It is filled with judgment, but it is about salvation and new life. And that, indeed, is what the journey of Lent that we begin today is all about. So I'll invite uh, Emily to lead us in our call to worship from the prophet Joel. Will you stand with me as we say these words together? Blow the trumpet. Sound the alarm. For the day of the Lord is coming. Announce his coming. Call everyone together for a holy gathering. Declare a holy fast. Gather the people and set them apart. Bring everyone together. From the oldest to the youngest. Leave whatever you're doing and listen. Even now, says the Lord, return to me and with all your heart. Now is the time. Let us bow down before our holy God. And we can remain standing and sing together.
You may be seated. And hear these words from the prophet Joel, chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, and 12 through 17. Um, Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spreads upon the mountain, a great and powerful army comes, their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart with fasting, with weeping, with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, Call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? The gospel reading this evening comes from Mark chapter 2, verses 18 through 22. Now John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting, and people came and said to him, Why do John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus said to them, The wedding guests cannot fast while the bridegroom is with them, can they? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast on that day. No one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth to an old cloak, otherwise the patch pulls away from it, the new from the old, and a worse tear is made. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins, otherwise the wine will burst the skins and the wine is lost, and so are the skins. But one puts new wine into fresh wineskins. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of the scriptures. This is a a scripture about new things, not old things. Um, And I like new things. Uh, It's kind of like, I, I think, when you get a new computer, um, this used to be more exciting uh, when, when, when you really had to, like, clear out the clutter in your computers. But, you know, when you get a new computer, it runs clean, right? There's no extra apps. There aren't things cluttering it up. Um, they, they work better. If you get a new phone, right, it, it, it just works better, at least for a little while. Then it gets cluttered up, and then we move on to the next. But Ash Wednesday and Lent are about a new start. It's like resetting and rebooting our faith lives, um, rebooting ourselves so that we can follow Jesus freshly and anew. And in this story, Jesus is feasting. So they're they're questioning him. They're saying, "Why, why is it that John's disciples, they fast, but you are feasting? It's like you're having a party. And Jesus is saying, well, that's because the bridegroom is here. This new kingdom is coming. The kingdom of God is there. And, and it's a new thing. It's like uh, getting into to a car that has new car smell, right? It's fresh. 
Uh, my, my truck right now does not have new car smell. It has mission trip smell in it. And I was going to get it washed, but it's, it's going to get messy anyway from the rain. But, but newness, this is what Jesus is talking about. And Mark chapter 2 has these three images of, of sort of new things happening. The first image is the one of new wine in old wineskins, that you don't, you don't put new wine into old wineskins. And if you've ever seen a photo of, of these wineskins they're talking about, they're very large. And it would be a lot of wine to waste if you put one, if you put older wine or, in, into, or new wine into old wineskins, they would burst, would, you would lose it all. And, and what Jesus is saying is, no, we've got something fresh. And so we're going to put it into something fresh. We're going to turn from the past and look forward. I don't know anything about sewing. I don't know how much patching we do anymore, but I, I guess you don't put uh, a new patch on something old that's already pre-shrunk uh, because you don't want it to, to separate or pull away. You want to put it on something that's new and fresh. And then this wedding image. This wedding, can you imagine going to a wedding? There's going to be a wedding in here on, on Saturday. They're getting ready for uh, the wedding uh, over in the fellowship hall. They were going to be outside. They're now going to be inside because of the rain. But can you imagine going to a wedding and then going in and nobody eats anything? You wouldn't go to a wedding reception and not eat anything. You're going to a wedding reception to celebrate this new life that this couple has together, a new life that has begun. They're starting something new, and that is something to celebrate. And Jesus is saying to them in this passage, look, the new thing is right here. It is right here amongst them. He says it will be taken away all in due time, but for now we celebrate at this new thing. And so on Ash Wednesday, we put the chance in front of you for new starts, for new beginnings, for new habits, for all sorts of new things. That's why I like Ash Wednesday. Uh, it's, it's the day where we get to turn things around and try again and try again. And we move in a direction that helps to shape us in who God wants us to be. We become the new vessel to take in this new kingdom way of living that Jesus calls us to live. Amen. As we come in preparation to receive the ashes, uh, we do so in confession because we do recognize that we fall short. We do recognize that, that uh, daily we fall short of what God hopes for us. And so, um, in just a moment, I'm going to have on the screen this prayer of confession, and I will invite you to share in these words with me in this responsive reading. Let's pray. Uh, have mercy on me, O God. Wipe away my faults. Purify me of my sin. I have sinned against none other than you. You are justified in passing sentence on me. Yet I pray, Lord, that you would hide your face from my sins and blot out all of my iniquities. Put a new and righteous spirit within me. and keep my spirit steady and willing. The Lord creates in us clean hearts. God puts new and right spirits within us. We're not cast away from the presence of the Holy One, and the Holy Spirit is not taken from us. In Christ, we are restored to the joy of God's salvation, and by God's grace, our spirits are remade to follow God's will. Thanks be to God. The ashes uh, on Ash Wednesday 
are a reminder and an invitation for us to come back to that which we have come. And I'm often reminded that these ashes, um, son, there we go. These ashes uh, once were, were living things and yet still contain that life within them. And we use them as a symbol to remind us that um, it is from ashes that we come and to ashes we return, but we, we have this hope of new life in them. As we stir them together almost with the waters of baptism, they bring new life into us. And so uh, I will offer a word of prayer over these ashes. Uh, I will invite you then to come forward as you feel called. We'll impose the ashes on your forehead and simply say the words, repent and believe the good news uh, that is the beginning of this season of Lent. Loving and gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of ashes that come from the very life that you have given to us, that we remind us that we are as the dust of the earth, but that we are also new creations and that we are all part of your kingdom. May these ashes remind us that in you our lives are made new. Amen. And now I invite you to come forward and to receive. Repent and believe the good news. 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 Praise be, repent and believe the good news. Amen. Amen. Repent and believe the good news. Grant, repent and believe the good news. Repent and believe the good news. Let's be in prayer. God, we come before you and we repent as we have come forward and received ashes, the act of repentance in meaning to turn around. We turn from our old ways to walk forward into new life with you. On our foreheads, it's the sign of the cross as a reminder that you have come, you have forgiven, and you have called us to walk in a new way of life. Help us to embrace this newness as we begin this journey through the season of Lent. In the name of Jesus Christ, 
Amen. I'll invite you now to stand as we are going to sing our closing hymn, Just As I Am. God loves you just as you are, and that we come to God and are received and sent forth, made new. Amen.